Welcome everyone, I am Johnny Christ and this is Drinks with Johnny. Thanks so much for checking out this episode and thanks to Sweet Drop CBD Oil. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there about cannabis or CBD oil um, and a lot of people think it's supposed to change your mind or alter your thoughts or something. That's just factually incorrect. It doesn't do any of that, but it makes you feel a lot better. It can reduce some stress. It helps these receptors in your brain process food uh, or the chemicals in food rather. And uh, you can learn all this by going to sweetdrop.com. There's no bullshit there. They're not trying to sell you some snake oil or anything like that. It's actually real shit and it's good. Uh, so, and they got different flavors. This one right here is blood orange. So I'm going to uh, uh, start off my day right here with a little blood orange CBD. It tastes good, and they got a bunch of flavors over there that you might like. And guess what? Use promo code Drinks with Johnny. That's Drinks with J O H double N Y, and you're gonna get 20% off your order. Uh, so a friend that I met uh, several months ago, we were supposed to do this show in person. Obviously, under the pandemic, we had to uh, shift from that. Uh, but today, joined virtually, here is Chappelle Lacey. How you doing, man? Woo! How we doing? Hell yeah. So first of all, I have to ask, you know, amongst the pandemic and some other issues going on in the world, how are you and your family, your camp doing? Uh, doing fine. You know, I, I, I know as we... As far as me personally, I'm doing everything to keep my sanity. I think whenever things get hectic, I've kind of like always tried to do that. And uh, that's like one of the biggest focuses uh, that I have right now is just fucking keeping sanity. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and it's definitely hard to do in these times. I mean, especially what do, so you're a stand up comedian. Um, and obviously, right now, amongst the pandemic, there's not a lot of work for you, I imagine, right? I mean, you could go to some places like Arizona and other states that are open, but here in California, uh, there's n none of those places are, are, are hosting comedy shows. So what have you been doing uh, under the pandemic to pass the time? Well, I mean, luckily, you know, things like this podcast, and then I have my own individual podcast that I do, and then I'm on a podcast with uh, Theo Vaughn and Brendan Schaub, yeah, that, that, that's the, the king and the sting that you're yeah, on there. And, the and then you yeah. have your own, which is It's Managed. Um, yeah. I saw a little bit about that one. When we met months ago, you actually mentioned it in your podcast like the next day. And, yeah. uh, Sam, yeah. who got us in touch, actually brought that up. And uh, so yeah. I went and checked it out and I was like, oh, that's cool, man. And uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, it's good that you're staying busy with the podcasting. Um, how has that been for you? Were you just kind of thrown into podcasting because... Well, you're a stand up comedian. You need to do podcasting. Was that kind of what it was, or were you already a fan of podcasting before? Uh, no, it all, it, it was all like organic. You know, I kind of just, you know, I know, I've always been that kind of person where it just like, if it makes sense, then it makes sense. I'll just uh, flow with it. And, um, you know, it was actually Brendan Shop that helped me come up with my own. He was like, oh, you journal so much. He goes, why don't you just make your pod, like, why don't you just, talk your journal out loud, you know what I mean? And, and uh, so I was like, oh, okay. Cause I've, I've never really wanted to do podcasts or anything like that because I was like, I, I don't know. And it was like, I didn't realize if I had anything to talk about. And he was like, you journal like a lot. So mm -hmm. why don't you just like, you know, base it off that. And I was like, oh, okay. It was, you don't have to be funny, but just, you know, just speak and be interesting. And I was like, okay, so that made sense. And then uh, with, with those guys, yeah. Um, there was there was someone before me on the show and he he uh, ended up leaving and going and doing his own thing. And then they asked me to be a permanent um, person on, on their show, uh, King of the Sting. So, yeah, which is a, I mean, it's a very popular podcast. So that was that must have been a, a, a pretty cool gig for you to, to step into. Right. Yeah. It was, it, yeah. Really cool. Because, yeah, I've known both of them for a really long time now. I, bet, I met both of them, I think, in 2016, you know. Uh, is when I met them back home in uh, Arizona. So it was uh, it was kind of like a natural thing. It's like, yeah, we, we all like already know each other, like, mm -hmm. you know, just from uh, that history. So it was just easy to to jump in right with them and, you know, uh, have have a blast with them. 
Yeah. So, so you mentioned you said back in Mesa or uh, Arizona. I know that you were you most of your life you were born and raised in Mesa, Arizona, right? Yeah. Um, and where are you right now? Are you back in Arizona? Or are you in California? No, no, no. I'm, I'm in uh, L.A. Okay, I thought LA. so. I just I assumed yeah. so, but I guess I could. It doesn't necessarily mean you're not in Arizona right now, but that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm glad that you mentioned your journaling in um, your It's Managed podcast. I think it's really interesting that you bring out um, uh, all these things that you're journaling. Um, and you, at one point, went into anger management, and I feel like that was kind of uh, something that you're you're telling people about and, may, and and trying to help them through maybe their own uh, psychological issues with that. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that right here on yeah. this platform? Yeah. So uh, you know, basically, you know, I went in, I went in high school, and then I also went in uh, college, and everyone's like, "Oh, you just put yourself in there." I go, "No, I didn't." <laughs> that wasn't my choice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone goes to anger management by choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not like, a, hey, I saw a flyer up there one day and it was like, yeah. if you want to go to anger management, learn how to be an anger managed. <laughs> literally, literally everyone thinks that like, oh, like, oh, you, you just went in. I'm like, okay. No. Uh-huh. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I, I grew up uh, and I'm very open about everything of my life. I grew mm. up with an abusive uh, stepfather. And so um, all I knew was, um, you know, just violent uh, behavior. So anytime, you know, in, in the outside world, anytime I would, re- I would react to anything or if anything happened to me, I'd react in ways that were very uh, violent because that's what I knew. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, in high school, it, it was kind of the anger management was different. It was more like uh, <laughs> it was more like uh, they just put it on one of the teachers. You know, like a, like like a driver's ed teacher is like okay. usually a football coach or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it was for like anger. So he didn't actually <laughs> probably have a degree in this or anything. He's just fucking. Let me try and talk you down a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I was sitting here. I'm like, are you reading a textbook? Right now? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> you know, so so in, in in you know, and not to blame them, you know, or anything, but I think they could only go so much. Like they could probably only ask a child, you know, so much of their life, you know, they mm-hmm. try to just get to the root to the root to, you know, somewhat get to the root of the problem. But, uh, but in college was the second time, like it really, uh, worked. Um, I was, I was, uh, cause I, I did competitive cheerleading. And, yeah. I was going to, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought yeah, that up. Yeah. We're going to get into yeah. that in a second. Cause I found that yeah. to be so I was, uh, uh, a little comical and great at the same time. So we got to talk a little yeah, bit about yeah. that. So I was cheering in college and um, that's where uh, my coach made me go because I had too many outbursts. Um, <laughs> cheerleaders are supposed to be happy, right? But anyways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're in anger management. <laughs> Let's not go too far here. You're in anger management in college. This is your second time through anger management and you're in cheer at the same time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I call myself the bully cheerleader. Oh. But... Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. It's like uh, it's yeah. somehow like there's got to be a Phil Dumphy story in there. Are you are you a fan of a uh, uh, Modern Family? <laughs> yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah, great show. <laughs> so, so, but um, what was interesting about my anger management? The I've had a total of three anger management teachers. But my third one, what was interesting, is he basically. Uh, used my interest uh to help me through my anger so like he realized oh he likes punk rock okay cool he's a oh he's a big henry rollins fan okay cool so i i would always listen and oh it's so funny i'm wearing i see it i know i i I feel like we've had this conversation about henry rollins before chabelle like uh, i think when we first met we were talking about that i saw on your instagram you actually had a picture with him when you did a comedy tour and you did like a throwback just a few days ago right yeah like in ohio there's a a fan painted that oh rad uh, that's like rollins from like 1982 i want to say like and, he was, wh- and he's right next to Val Kilmer in my favorite movie, Tombstone, yeah. as Doc yep. Holliday. That's pretty solid right there. Yep. So, uh, um, yeah, so basically, like, I would listen to a lot of his spoken word, you know, all this stuff. It, but it, I, I don't think it really clicked with me. I think it was just I was just such a fan of Henry that I would just listen. 
And then um, they basically were like, oh, do you realize what he said right here? Do you realize, you know, what he, you know, what he's doing, what he's, you know, and I'm like, no. And they basically used that to help me with my anger. You know what I mean? Like it, it was, it was, it was very interesting. And they were like, oh, like just, just taking the world of punk rock and, you know, really breaking down the lyrics for me to where I could use it, you know, in a positive way. You know what I mean? That was like really, you know. That's you so. What? That's such an interesting approach, and I'm glad that it it has helped you. Um, it's just interesting to me in a sense that like I've met you uh, before. I've seen your stand up, and you seem to be such a well put together individual. Um, and you're very happy and uplifting of others. And I guess that's, you probably had to get there through this journey, right? You weren't just already there, right? Yeah. I've, I've, I have to work so hard at it and I've just never, I've never stopped working at it. You know, um, I realize I've come to realize what, what, um, you know, where I do my best as far as handling situations, you know, like mm. if a situation is thrown my way, what do I, you know, what's my best way is through uh, dialogue. Like I don't, I don't work best when I just like, you know, um, you know, we'll, we'll take what, what's all going on, you know, at the moment, like, you know, uh, there's people protesting. I don't necessarily do good, wouldn't do good at a protest mm -hmm. because, you know, the the energy of the environment is like, you know, like I'm like, well, I want to fucking hit someone, you know what I mean? But I, don't, I can't hit anybody, you know, but like my, my, I'm more of like, a, I can understand that frustration though. I really can. Yeah, exactly. I can empathize with that frustration. I can't sympathize at the moment, but yeah, you know, exactly. Looking so at me, more, I'm, I'm a, I'm a 35 year old Caucasian. I can't sympathize with the, with, with the, but I could definitely empathize. I'm glad you brought it up though too. I was going to get to that. Um, yeah. Because I, I really, truly want to hear your take on everything. Um, you have uh, a, a perspective that, to me, is very interesting. You were, you were adopted by a white family. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I just want to, you know, turn it over to you and ask you, like, given your, your life and, your, and, and what, a, what you've gone through, how are you feeling right now amongst the Black Lives Matter movement, amongst uh, the George Floyd killing? Um, yeah. I know that, you know, I'm just learning a lot of things. I am, I am an ignorant white man, and I'm starting to learn some things. Um, yeah. And I was complacent before, but I'm trying my best now to understand things. So um, I'm not asking you to teach me. I know that, that, you know, you could go forever, but I'm just looking for your perspective. No, I don't, I don't, mind, I don't mind this question at all. Um, I think what, um, what it all narrows down to and, um, is a, is a, is just a big lack of, uh, education on some, in so many areas, okay. um, you know, just across the board, I think about, you know, growing up in Arizona, you know, it was predominantly white, not saying that, you know, you know there was also Mexicans, blacks and stuff like that, but it was, uh, predominantly white and you know I grew up you know being the black kid that was you know in the punk in the uh you know and everyone thinks I got it from my adopted folks which is not necessarily where it came from it, you know I I discovered it at an early age uh -huh. so you know I grew up with everyone telling me that I wasn't black that I wasn't black you know it was just like you know and the, not not just at you know at a uh, school but also you know at home from like my you know the verbal abuse from my stepfather you know i would just hear it so much it's and terrible. i went through this uh through years of uh identity issues on a racial level you know and it's taken me uh years to and I, it wasn't until i reconnected with my biological father when i was 29 he did uh 17 years in uh prison and he had been out by the time i reached out to him he had been out for like 10 years already what did he what was he in prison for just uh out of curiosity uh, dr uh drug drug dealing he was a drug okay. dealer and so um um you know reaching out to him you know i was kind of nervous because you know my whole life i was told i wasn't black you know you know you're, you're not this you're not that <laughs> I, and, i'm sorry to laugh but that just seems so funny now like 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 it, what, it what is, do you mean you're not hilarious black? <laughs> like what the exactly. fuck are you talking about Exactly. And, 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 and I didn't even realize that until, you know, I connected with my father and he was just like, oh, this is your this is your grandma. This is your grandpa. This is, you know, your great grandpa, like just showing this like, uh, you know, history. And he was saying like in, in like 
he like came in with like such open arms and and I realized that because he was like, this is your grandpa. This is your, you know, I started hearing the word your. So I, so I was like, oh, I have a connection to this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so it was like, oh, I've never not been black. You know, so I like the fact that I was dealing with that. I think it was just, you know, I'm not mad at those people. I'm not mad at my stepfather. I have no ill will towards them at all, like or, or ill will towards the people that treated me the way they did. Um, I just think it was a, a massive lack of education on you know everyone's part i think if i would have understood early on that oh i'm just i'm you know i'm a guy that listens that loves the world of punk rock and heavy metal music it just happens to be black that doesn't mean that i'm not well yeah they're putting parameters on that in the first place is obviously like that doesn't make exactly that doesn't make sense hindsight obviously you know exactly you know and, and and you know uh you know if it wasn't for bands like you know, bad brains that kept me like holding on, you know, bad brains. And then also you got, um, you know, uh, homie, what's his name? Harold from uh, Kill Switch Engage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and, and uh, dude from uh, Seven Dust. You know, you just got, you got so many of those dudes that are just into this world. And, you know, uh, uh, Jason from Fever 333, you know, like you got all these people, you know, these, uh, you know, black dudes that are, you know, out there in the world. And it's like, you know, watching them. Yeah, with their it's confidence. kind of funny though, right? Because then, the, the, I, I I hate to use this term, and I, and forgive me for my no, uh, you're good. My, my ignorance here, but like it for a lot of years, it felt like they were like the token black guys in yeah. in rock music, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad you mentioned that because you're like, well, I was black and into this kind of music way before, so like, and it wasn't yeah, because of before. my white family that raised me. It was like, yeah, that's just where I gravitated towards, and I feel like. Um, a lot of people think, you know, because you got into rock, you know, like you said, you're, you're getting whitewashed or something like that. Yeah, and it's yeah. just not the case. It's a music is art and you're just getting into something that spoke to you. How, yeah, however, yeah. and we're all human beings at the end of the day, that's part of like what, what we're figuring out right now is that just trying to navigate. These, yeah. Cause there's all this stigma that was there before from generations before, and it's fucking terrible. And yeah. the fact that I didn't even realize it, it was as big of a deal as it was because, you know, I'm, I don't feel that I'm racist or anything like that. And, um, but not knowing some things makes me part of that problem, I guess is what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. Like I didn't know much about Juneteenth until, until just this, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't yeah. know about black wall street until a few weeks ago. Like there's mm-hmm. so many things that I was not taught as a white man, um, yeah. that I, I totally agree with you. It's an educational problem. I think that there is a lot of things that haven't been taught to all races that are like, hey, what you get yeah. like a month in February and all you talk about is Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and then Rosa Parks. And that's it. It's like, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's yeah. a lot more going on than that. Yes. 100%. You know, and, that, and that's, uh, you know, cause you know, not only were you not aware, but there's also, there's other black kids that aren't aware either. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that, that aren't necessarily getting the, the education on it as well, because yeah, you know, you know, February Black History Month comes through and then it's just so quick and you only get the same amount of like, it's it's just kind of like a, you know, reoccurring thing of the same, you know, thing that's being taught. Yeah, I remember I that from school. I remember yeah. when I was in school right here in Orange County, we, yeah. we it would be Black History Month and then we'd learn about the same thing every year, not even like as I'm growing older, learning different things. It's like, yeah. oh, here's the curriculum for February. And yeah. then we're going to go back to the way that we teach history outside of that. And it's like, well, yeah. wait a minute. So I never thought too much about that until very recently. And I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. I do remember that. That's fucking weird that that's that like I was only taught certain things for a month and it was the same certain things every year for that fucking month. And then we didn't talk about the rest of it, the rest of the yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, like, that's what, like, that's what I've pretty much defined everything that's going on. When you see the protests, when you see people standing up, you see people calling out these issues um what that stems from is how um poor our educational system has been you Mm -hmm. know what i mean that's that that's all that is like a frustration of lack of education i totally agree there's two things that i think that can really help change and you could correct me if i'm wrong again but the two things that i feel is one the voting uh obviously um uh, a lot of people's 
uh, uh, voting privileges have been stifled over the over yeah. the last few elections, and that's not okay. And education, yeah. I think those uh, education reform. I think those two things are real things that we can change now that can help. You know, we can't undo what has happened, obviously, yeah, but we can help 100%. move forward in the right direction. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, we can't undo like like you know. Um, I, I think about ever since I reconnected with my biological father, and I had this burst of like just um you know learning something of a world that i've like seen and like known about but like didn't really know and now that i get to know it it's like opened the doors of like wanting me wanting to learn so much more like i love like that's i mean i think i've always been that way that's i mean just getting into punk rock music itself you know out of the the norm of what you know um everyone else was doing like even me joining cheerleading wasn't you know, like <laughs> that was I, definitely I was, not the norm. <laughs> no, it was definitely not the norm, especially like, and, and I was, I was one of those people that I was like, yeah, like I didn't give a fuck. You know, if I, if, if I like it, I'm a, I, I like it because I like it. You know what I yeah, mean? You like, have fun, not, that, that's, that's the whole thing. And that, that, yeah, that, like, that, me that's like, your individualism. You're allowed yeah. to have that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like, try and stifle other yeah. people's individualism. And it's like, why? Like what, what, what am I doing that harms you so much? You know, like, especially with like, mm -hmm. like cheerleading, why would anyone look at you differently because you're cheerleading like, and it's not the norm. It's like, oh, that guy shouldn't be doing that. It's like, how is this affecting you? Why do you yeah. care? Yeah. I go, what, <laughs> yeah, I go, what is, what does it have to do with you? You know, it, yeah. it's, it is, it is wild, you know, like, uh, and that's why, I'm, uh, the punk rock world has like blessed me with that, um, individuality, just understanding that. And, you know, I, when I felt like I had nothing else, I knew I had that music does that, that was only like you know it was mm -hmm. it was so like you know i started off i was listening like early on um you know i really got it heavy into uh like new metal at the time like corn uh dev tones you know what do we uh, call that now not. i just said just i i don't mean to cut you off there but i mean what do we call that because it's not it's not new metal anymore it was 20 years ago no. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what yeah, do we call that? Years ago. <laughs> I don't even, you know, I don't even know. Like I just I'm I don't know why like, I'm asking you. I mean, you're the comedian, I'm the one in the band and I'm asking you for <laughs> for advice on that one. I don't really fucking know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. That's a good question. I never thought of that. But I mean, yeah, like I got into that because like or I gravitated to that quickly, you know, um because like all the chaos in my home, that was the sound I was hearing that like that mm -hmm. matched, it matched the chaos in my home. And like, you know, that, that like when I would listen to like, you know, uh, corn and, and, you know, specifically corn and like, yeah, know, well, I mean, Jonathan Davis had a lot of lyrics that I, I could absolutely yeah. see you gravitating towards coming from a broken, oh my God. He's, a broken he's home. Spoke a, to a lot of, he spoke to a lot of people yep. and, um, which is a beautiful thing. And I, uh, I remember just bumping, you know, that life is peachy album and you know that Great song album. kill you at the end of the you know album like yeah i was like that's what i'm feeling this is what it's like you know see that's terrible so i didn't i so when we met it was when the fuck oh i know exactly when it was because i met uh ted dibiase and hacksaw jim duggan the day before and then we came back to huntington and went and saw you um at the uh do stand up uh, here in huntington uh, uh, it was like February seventh. Uh, it was my son's birthday. Yes, it was my son's birthday. So I'm. It's all coming back to me. Um, <laughs> so we we actually met um, through a mutual friend of ours, uh, Trevor Wallace. You rang. Oh shit, Trevor Wallace. I'm here. Perfect. <laughs> Who yeah. you were out doing uh, stand up with? We mm -hmm. we had a nice conversation sitting outside. I didn't know much about you before. I think Sam, our producer, had reached out to you before that. Yeah. And uh, I just remember really enjoying the conversation with you and uh, hearing your background as you're re-explaining it now from uh, a musical standpoint and like yeah. what you were into. And I, I just found it so cool that like, um, you know, what kind of music you gravitated towards because of this picture that you're pointing right now that is like, you know, you were in a fucked up place and music kind of helped you guide in that way and i think that's uh i hate to i already said yeah. excited or cool or whatever that these aren't cool things but they're very interesting things i guess yeah yeah no it's i i think it's cool and i really think about it you know that that um you know that's what 
you know, I think if I, I always think if I didn't have that, I probably would have done something to people, you know, I probably, well, yeah, you're not a small guy. I mean, they, they, they can't yeah. tell on virtual right now, but yeah. I am a small guy standing next to Chappelle. I look even smaller. He could do some <laughs> fucking damage. <laughs> and, and that's what it was like. And if, if I didn't, you I always, I would say that, that, um, when when that Slipknot self-titled album hit, that got me through the first year of junior high. You know, wow. like that was the, you know, it was, you mean, you think of songs like Surfacing, you know, and that chorus and what it was saying, like that was like, I think that was what helped me walk through through campus on a regular basis because, you know, I did hear, get a lot of uh, shit across the board from people, you know, that was, well, that was what the album. Oh, you know what? That album came out 21 years ago today. D- today? What day is it? Um, June 29th, Monday. Yeah. I, Did it come it, out the 29th? Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it came out 21. Yeah. I, I want to say today. Happy birthday. Yeah. I know. Happy birthday to that self titled album. And you, yeah, of course, you know that album. And, and you know, um, I think me loving the world of music so much, like, is one of the bigger reasons as to why, you know, because I, I I felt accepted by it. That was the only thing I felt accepted by was the music. See, you know, you, was- you you you've you've talked to you've danced around this a little bit too. Where you had an abusive uh, stepfather. I, I don't mean in life you've stepped around no, it. No, I, obviously, you're very yeah. open about it. Um, I mean, your stepfather was abusive. Your, I mean, you come from such a turmoil background. That it's just interesting. It's still very interesting to me that you came out so well. I mean, I don't know how else to put you. You're a well put together individual. Like you're a nice person. You're a good person in society. And yeah. but your background is like so turmoiled. Like I don't, I don't think there's really a question here, but more of like a pat on your back. I mean, the way that yeah. you've that, that you've been able to adapt to shit no one should have to deal with to begin yeah. with. Yeah. is is obviously amazing i think you're a great role model for anyone else who has dealt with something in a similar fashion yeah well i look at guys i look at guys like you know like a jonathan davis you know a henry rollins mm-hmm. you know and and i i've watched them be so honest about their upbringing and then seeing how they are now um you know it's just made me you know realize that it was possible so like i was like the only way i could really figure that out you know, is to, to continue to learn. I just got to learn so much. Like the world of learning is what, you know, may like it's give, it's giving me different perspectives. Like, like I always tell people, I go, I don't have any ill will towards my stepfather. I was like, I don't, if I saw him, I'd shake his hand. Like I, I wouldn't, I, wow. I just don't, I, I don't, that's I don't powerful hold on though, man. To yeah. And that's, and, and that's the thing. Cause like, the thing is he's never treated me the way I would treat him right now. He's never treated me that way. Yeah. So the, I, th- that, 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 you know, that, um, like you said, power, like, like I took the power over something and, and I did it with, with love, you know, I forgive him with love, you know, it's not like, cause it, cause if I do it with, Hey, right there, that's a great, that's a great message right there. Yeah. Cause if I do it with, Hey, then, you know, like, like, I don't know. I just feel that that there's no progression. And I, and I remember feeling that, Hey, like, I just felt so stagnant. You know, yeah. like I just felt like just like stuck, you know, like it was like the same circle and that and then I, I was thinking, you know, everything is wrong. Everything is bad. Everything is, you know, uh, it was it was, you know, depriving me of my own like, you know, self-worth and just the knowledge that I could, you know, be above that. So, like, I always try to do this, like find out the different perspective and, you know. And I and I I think that's rooted from, you know, understanding that, you know, like when when, you know, it's like it's like weird. Like I, I know I root everything back to punk because it, it's, it's such a massive. Uh, no, I love that. Like, I mean, I, I I think that's what you know. In our very first conversation, I think that's what we both had a kinship to. Is I, I grew up on punk rock too, man. Like I I yeah. I, I love that you. Uh, gravitate towards that and use that as as a tool i mean to one person it's just music to another it's something completely different you know what i mean it, it's completely different it like just the whole um the whole thinking for yourself it's like 
you know, what I've taken from, from the world of it is that like, yeah, we all come together, you know, we all listen to this music, we all mosh, we all, you know, enjoy this stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to think for yourself. So it's like, so I, I you know, and I've always together felt like, as individuals, I guess. Is, is yeah, kind of the exactly. Thing. And, and I, and I've always felt like kind of like a lone wolf. And so what I've always done is like when, when things are like chaotic over here and everybody's like this, I've always, you know, taken a step back to discover it for what it means to me, to yeah. me personally. Like I, I, like, I can't think of it the same way. Like another, like, I'm, I don't know how to operate in groups. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I like, got gotcha. you. Well, I mean, I'm sure you've operated in groups. You just mentioned a couple like you just mentioned a mosh pit and to a lot of people who haven't been in a mosh pit before, uh, they look at it as like, Oh, these guys are crazy. And like, and it's so scary. And it's like, no, like, that's a community right there. We're all doing yeah. that together. The, yeah. I mean, the first few um, punk mosh pits I was in, I remember getting my ass knocked down. And as soon as I got down, there was someone else to pick someone, me right there. There was someone right there. So yeah. There was someone right there. Always. Yeah. And people, don't real, people don't realize that literally, you know, it's, it's one of the, like, you have to really, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those worlds. Like people look at, at the outside of it and they go, Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. And they have this answer to something that they've never really, you know, educated themselves their, on. Yeah. Educated themselves on like, take your emotions out, you know, all, all, all these preconceived, preconceived thoughts that you have go in there. Like now I'm not saying going in the pit, but just go to the show. <laughs> it's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah, that, not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hype it up and like amidst uh, amongst a, a pandemic, we're like, yeah, go start a mosh pit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the thing is, yeah, it's not for everybody, but and and it doesn't have to be for you. But to understand it to where it's not as crazy as you think it is, mm -hmm. you know, is a, is another level of like learning. It's like, oh yeah, that's 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 what they do. You know, that's yeah. that's how they you know express themselves. You know, like that. Like the the I, I, the mosh pit was perfect for me. Yeah. You know, it was perfect for me because it was like, you know, we're not hurting anyone. You might get hurt. You, you might yeah. Get yeah hurt. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that might be part of it. But, you know, yeah, uh, but, being on stage, I've seen the uh, people get hurt in the pit. And like when they're seriously hurt, we have to bring in the ambulance. We always stop playing and let everyone know, hey, clear a path. That motherfucker just cracked his skull. <laughs> like, let, let's all be cool. Exactly. So it and, and that's what people you know, don't realize like that, like that's, that's, that's what makes it, that's where the strength of, uh, you know, these shows come in, the strength of the community mm -hmm. comes in is when it's like, Oh, one, one of, you know, one of our own is down. Let's, you know, let's get it up, you know? And, and, you know, if, if the world could just take that kind of mentality, you know, our, our nation as itself, like, and understand like, Oh, you know, we all live here. We all are here. You know, and we're stronger I mean? together, by we're the way. Strong, we're way stronger uh, together. You know what I mean? And, and uh, that's what, you know, I think the that's where the communication breakdown happens mm -hmm. is that I think I don't think anyone's ever really cleared that up and like made us as a whole realize realize that. You know what I mean? I totally agree. I totally agree. It's, yeah. it's that, now let's get on to a little bit. Um, sorry for that shit segue, but um, let's, no, let's, get, <laughs> <laughs> let's get on. To, so we've, we've, we've discussed a lot of uh, a lot of serious issues right now. And uh, it's obviously comes out in your life. And thank you so much for sharing again here. Yeah. Um, what I want to what I wanted to ask and kind of segue into is your comedy, your stand up. How do you take your life and what you've done and, and gone through and turn it into something as hilarious as I've seen you be in your standup. I mean, like, yeah. I know a lot of comedians are troubled people, right? Like, like just yeah. mentally. And yeah. uh, they find a way to put a spin on it and make us all laugh and make the world a better place. So how, what, what is your process, I guess, is the question I'm asking. Uh, my, my process um, with my comedy, um, I just want to be honest you know, um, and I, I want to, uh, like everything I talk about, I, you know, I, I talk about my relationship with my stepfather. I talk about going through anger management. I talk about all these, you know, things. And, um, the reason why I talk about it is because, and I'm able to make it funny is because I'm okay with a lot of it. 
You know, mm-hmm. like I've I've worked on it enough to where I realize, you know, like the weight is off my shoulders with it, you know, and I can talk about it in a way so comfortably and I can talk about it in a way to where it's funny. You know, even even if, the, you know, there's times where people have gotten weird, you know, like whenever, I, even when I just say abusive stepfather and, and I'm prepared for that because because what I've realized, I go, you know, I've worked on it, you know what I mean? And I I get people to realize maybe you need to work on yourself, you know, and yeah. then, then they're like on board with it because they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, you know, because they, they don't want to they don't want to be the one. I that's like, like I like you. Yeah, you need to do a little bit more acting because I like the way that moment right there when you're looking around. That was, that was, a, that was a perfect acting moment right there. I just got to say. Yeah, because it, it, it's cause <laughs> exactly what it is. I, I make them like realize in a fun way, you know, like I'm not like, you know, making them feel bad about it. But like in a fun mm. way, I've been able to make them realize like what they're doing when they get uncomfortable with me talking about something that I'm completely okay yeah. with. And it, and it, it, by the way, to all of you out there, it is okay to feel uncomfortable in a conversation while you're learning. It is okay. Just try to, yeah. you know, that I will, I, I gotta be honest. I was a little uncomfortable to talk, talk to you about uh, the recent, you know, uh, George Floyd and uh, yeah. other things. I wasn't like, I, I didn't know like, when we were talking, I was like, do I bring Chappelle on now? And I was asking, like, do you think it's a good time for you to come on and talk about things? And you were like, yes, let's fucking do it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, is this going to be an awkward conversation and or an, un, an uncomfortable one, it, let's say. And I, and I had yeah. to realize, like, it might be, but yeah. it's one you need to have. So yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm again, just want to thank you again for coming yeah. on and, and uh, sharing your truth. Well, that's what we meant. We, like, I think our... our uh you know, our society, we've missed out on dialogue. We like yeah, a lot man. of our dialogue with other people has been on social media, like a back and forth. Like you're waiting, you're waiting for a reply from someone that you don't necessarily know that you're not necessarily like face to face. with. And they're or, not being like, truthful on those anyway. Like they're, they're trolls all over the place. That. Like <laughs> Exactly. Like literally it's, it's the, I think it's one of the weakest forms to have a conversation. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, like, you know, but like, you know, like you didn't, like you reached out to, like we reached out to do this, right? We didn't say, let's have a back and forth on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. I'm going to do that next time. Like when you come back on for season three, we have to have a Twitter beef before you come on to really hype up the episode. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Like we, we couldn't, we couldn't make that happen over social media. And that's, yeah. and that's where people, I got a buddy uh, just the other day, you know, he was like, man, I'm upset. He goes, you know, this dude came at me on, I was like, dude, stop. He <laughs> didn't like, come at you. Like, he tweeted yeah. at you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, he tweeted at you. I was like, you're taking something so personal from a guy that you don't talk to. You don't, you've never sat down with, you know, you don't know him. He doesn't know you and you're taking it personal. Yeah. Like, what? You know, yeah, that's that's and I was like, that's that's I'm like in the conversation now. I was like, I'm not going, I'm not <laughs> you going know, now. you know, it's really easy to end that conversation. Don't look at it. <laughs> yeah, just don't look at it. I, was, I was the fact that I'm like, you're letting this ruin your day. You're letting this ruin your day. That's you don't up. know them. They don't know you. Yeah, totally. I was like, you're still going to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, you're still <laughs> doing your job. You, you know, you. You you're still going about your day. Yeah. But why 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 are you letting this this person? Well, I um, I agree with you, and it, not even just you know we're talking about social media, but like even beyond social media, like when someone cuts you off in you know it, it, while you're yeah. driving, you let that ruin your day. You like you have to then get in front of them and park in front of them and confront them and have this kind of anger, and it's like. Why are you allowing this one moment that the person could have non-intentionally done or intentionally doesn't really matter? It yeah. happened. Move fucking on. Like it's not that big yeah. of a fucking deal. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Like, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like, like uh, the more I've learned, like that's what has like has gotten my like how I've been able to control my anger. You know, just it's just the continuation of learning and educating more and realize, oh, that was, that was a mistake I did back here. Let's, you know, and then I learn and I I know how to, you know, who's for, that's why I was thinking it's funny when people, 
uh, call out people for like some past shit. I'm I'm saying within reason, within reason. Of course, <laughs> yeah, within, within reason. Yeah, yeah. Within reason. When shit happens, and you're like, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. When, you're, when, yeah. Let's just say if you're a a politician and some skeletons in your closet come up, then we should be, <laughs> we should definitely be looking at those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So within <laughs> reason, but like you know, a lot of times it's like stuff that someone genuinely just made a mistake. You know, back in the day. And, you know, people cry out for this apology from this person. And I go, if, if you look at their life from that moment and to where they're at now, the apology's already been there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really, a, it's really about more it. about your actions. It, I mean, at this point, I guess it's because of social media and everyone has a voice and yada, yada, yada. You, they feel like you need to get out there and, you know talk about that moment and i guess what uh, correct me if i'm wrong what i guess what you're saying is like actions do speak louder than words i know it's an old cliche but it's more 100%, 100%. about who cares about your fucking apology anyone can write a fucking apology anyone how have you how anyone have you do that. anyone can do that how how are you going to actually change if if you actually feel remorse that's what i want to know more do you actually feel remorse or is this just mm -hmm. you know eh, fuck it i'm just i'll take two seconds and write a fucking five-year-old's yeah. fucking apology yeah yeah exactly and a lot, like i i think about you know i i honestly like and, and it's not even like like i don't i don't need an apology from my stepfather i don't need an apology i don't need an apology from from my biological father for not, you know, uh, being in my life for, you know, doing the things that he did, you know, and, and it's, and it's weird. Like I, I can only imagine like trying to come at him for what he did in the past when he's doing everything he can right now to be a better person because and, and like the life he lives now, he's just so relieved. Cause he's like, Oh man, I made it out. Like he realized, mm -hmm. Oh, this is what I have this in front of me. You know what I mean? Like I have. Yeah, well, I've seen that on your Instagram too. I saw that you uh, had a picture with your biological parents, and I believe you. It looked like you were on a stage of some kind. Is that? Yeah, it did was they come out and see one of your uh, stand-ups? Oh, sorry, Peter Gabriel is my alarm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. <laughs> I first so that actually worked out perfect too because. Uh, on the video here, it actually like glitched while it happened. So it was like it glitched into Peter Gabriel. So that was pretty fucking yeah. rad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, but uh, you know, I that was one of your gigs, though, right? That that your biological yeah, that was one. That was to. one of my gigs. Uh, that was the uh, that was like my first like big headlining gig, and mm -hmm. both of my parents had came to it or whatever. But yeah, like you know, I'd rather live a life with them now where we're growing than to constantly talk or, or constantly you know chastise them for what they've done like because yeah if i if i do that then how do how because how do you move if forward I, if you're just yeah. focusing on the past how are you how are you moving to the future exactly and and it's it's more so just understanding what it was and understanding what we have right now mm -hmm. it's like what do you what do you have right now that's the that's the to me that's the coolest uh shit it's like what you said about me earlier like I come from this like turmoil and then what I have right now and what I've done, what I'm doing right now is just a lot more magical. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, and, and, and in order for me to get to this point, I've obviously had to like learn something. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you like, definitely did. And I, th let's get into a little bit of what you're doing now and, and uh, you know, your profession, your art form. Yeah. Stand up comedy. You're fucking hilarious. I did not know this about you before that date february 7th that we already talked about you yeah. uh were uh one of the one of the lineup before trevor wallace who came through yeah. he's been on the show um really great dude um how did you Love get him. to meet him um and how did that tour come together uh and then i want to jog your memory about one awesome thing that happened that night but before that i want to ask you like 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 do you still talk to Trevor often? Are you guys, you guys still do tours together, right? Or I mean, well, when, not, right, not right now, <laughs> not right now but, amongst yeah, yeah. the pandemic, but like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you've, you've done a lot of things with him. How did you first meet him? How'd that come together? And what was it about the two of you that you got along so well about? Um, you know, we originally met uh, on a, on a local show out here, a friend a, a mutual friend of ours was uh, running a, a show. Um, the Palladium has this like, side room that's got like a hundred seats in it yeah, and, yeah. Uh, she was doing a, a show out of it that's how trevor and i met then he was uh we were just talking 
and he was like, uh, I'm going to Phoenix to do some shows. We were just, I was like, oh man, I'm originally from Phoenix. And he, and he was like, oh, you want to go with me? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. You know, it was just like <laughs> instant click between, uh, he and I. And, um, when that happened, you know, it just, it just a friendship, you know, that, that just, just clicked immediately. Like he got, like he got, we have the same manager. Uh, yeah, got, I, 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 uh, I know. Yeah. 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 He got our manager because of me and I got, uh, we have, we also have the same agents and I got my, my, our, my agent because of him, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. kind of cool. Like flip Seth Jacobs is the name, right? That's, that's your guys' manager. Yeah. Seth, Seth's one of them. Yeah. And so, uh, he, you know, um, he, you know, we, we just, we just love doing shows together cause it's just so like, we just have such a fun vibe together yeah you know? and, and, and it's, it's funny like, that you guys are all in the same pool too and i, I just yeah. remembered as i was saying his name on the day i met you i had a lunch with seth in la with my producer and director uh what the fuck was that place brandon beverly hills something yeah i don't know yeah we, we had lunch there before <laughs> <laughs> whatever the fuck it yeah. was um, I, 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 it's neither here nor there, but I thought I, I it just like jogged my memory of that entire day. And I'm actually like, yeah. wow, I remember that day really fucking well. And I'm trying to remember why. And then I was like, oh shit, had lunch with Seth. Then went, and then that day where he was the one to tell us, Hey, Trevor and Chappelle are going to be, uh, in Huntington beach later on tonight. Yeah. And I was like, well, can you give us tickets? And then he's like, yeah, I got you covered. And then that's how I went and showed up that night. Yeah. <laughs> One no. of my favorite nights besides your amazing comedy. I don't know if you remember this. There was a couple, like a group of girls that got way too fucked up that night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And like wow. they were heckling and but like. All of you guys, like I, I, I had a conversation with, I can't remember who else was there right now. That's the one part. I apologize. Who, all the lineup, but we were hanging out after the fact outside and uh, we were talking about it because they were haggling and every single one of you guys were able to like be obviously quick witted right back at them and being like, okay, yeah. you've had too much to drink and yeah. like, like, please don't puke on the stage. Did they end up puking on the stage? No, no, they no, didn't. No. It didn't actually happen. It didn't actually happen. She was, she was but close. I want, I remember sitting on the other side of the stage watching. And I'm like, Oh God, please puke. Please fucking puke. Cause that would be <laughs> yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Cause she would have got torn into. Oh, but no, dude. I, you, it's, it's always funny. Like when it comes to like hecklers, you know, a lot of times I don't necessarily get heckled unless mm. the person's like really drunk. They just not aware. But a lot of times because like I have a bigger stature, people just like, Look at me like oh, a little bit more fearful. And and that when like, you talk about your 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 battle with uh anger management, it probably doesn't yes. help the situation. And, you, know, and, you know what? Whenever it's always funny, whenever whenever someone tells me like if I'm if I'm going up after a person and they're like, yo, the um they're a little chatty, you know, there there's there's a you know table right here, blah blah blah. Like you'll see as soon as you and yeah. I always like if if I always hear that, I always switch up my set and I do the anger management joke first then, <laughs> brilliant <yeah>. <laughs> then they go oh shit yeah because then they're like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i love that man yeah it's what, there's there's so much to comedy that people don't realize like a lot of it is is strategic you know when it comes to like you know uh just like having the control over the the crowd not like yeah. a godlike thing but just having you know like hey we're all an understanding and an awareness and you know like uh, yeah uh, you are this you're not a god but you are the center of attention for those you know the half yeah, hour hour or whatever like, it is it's like hey i'm gonna bring y'all on with me like just come come hang come for the ride that's, that's more that's more of what it's like so it's always funny whenever i hear that like i like you know oh yeah it's always strategic you know so if the crowd's like chatty or you know, they're, you know, doing something. Did any of that strategy by chance come from your cheerleading? I want to know, like, like, was, was there Um, like, I mean, you, so a lot of people I'm looking into the camera over here, Chappelle Lacey, this very hilarious, big, scary gentleman, um, (laughs) could, (laughs) was also a tumbler. (laughs) What was your role specifically as a cheerleader? Like, like, what was it? Um, where on the pyramid did you did you sit? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like I was like a rarity 
in uh, cheerleading at, at the time I was doing it. There's probably a lot, a lot more doing it now, but uh, I was, I was able to like tumble and stunt, which is like tumbling is like all the flips, crazy flips mm-hmm. and stuff. And then, uh, you know, stunting is where you're throwing up the girls, you know, uh, by yourself, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, um, I, I, cause I originally taught myself how to tumble when I was like five, you know, I just started doing flips cause I would watch like, all the old school, like martial art films, like Mm. some of those like Shaolin movies and then, you know, old Jackie Chan stuff, Bruce Lee stuff. And then rumble in the Bronx, man. That was the first time I saw Jackie Chan. Rumble in the Bronx is great. I love it. That's one of my favorites. That's the first time I ever saw Jackie Chan. And I've I've fallen in love ever since. Dude, same. That was the first (laughs) time I ever saw Jackie Chan was rumble in the Bronx. Um, But I, I would look at those and I would see them do the flips and stuff. And I just thought it was so cool. And so, Eventually, you know, when you're 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 five, you're so fearless. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you well, maybe you. I was not fearless at five. I'm still not fearless. I, I oh, I was. I didn't give a damn. I was like, Let's go. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I just, you know, I flipped. You know, you know, just started trying it slowly, doing it, and all of a sudden, I just got better and better. And then when I was 15, uh, I was playing in like a like a ska band. We didn't get too far. Um, but, what did you play? Uh, wait, wait, what did you play? Why didn't we not talk about this? In that band, what did I, I played bass in that band. I played in two, two bands. I was in like a, a ska one. And then I was in like a street punk, uh, band, like the casualties. Type oh, deal. right on. Yeah. But the, the you played bass, band, you said, right. I didn't even realize this. So this is, yeah. this is probably another reason why we have a kinship here. We're both, we're both. Bass oh players. yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's funny true. we could have this these two long conversations and still not realize that until just now. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. That's so funny. I, I can't believe we, we, that didn't even click. But uh, um, both of them ended very prematurely. Um, and one I got kicked out of because I was so into cheerleading. You know, the, it was the street punk band. <laughs> that wasn't. Yeah, I'm sure like a casualty <laughs> style street punk band would be like, yeah, this isn't really good for our image, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're we like, what? I'm around a bunch of chicks. Like, isn't yeah. that kind of cool? <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. You know, I'm still with it. How He's was it? No, no, no. Now I, th- that actually just brought me to a, another question that I'm very curious about. When you got into cheerleading, you're probably one of the only straight men that are, that are, that are a part of it. Like, yeah, was, and I'm sure it wasn't the incentive, but was it kind of like fish, like shooting fish in a barrel? I mean, like, like when you're as far as girls go. Like. Oh, I mean, yeah, because you got to think they know you best. You know, they have a trust in you. Yeah. And like, I, I've like, you know, so I, like I, I would fall for like I was the dude that would fall for girls so hard. Like, I, you know, I was like <laughs> hopeless romantic. You are, dude, you know, I would like. I, romantic comedies would get me hyped. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I'm the same way, dude. See, we're learning so much about each other. Yeah. I am to this day when I'm talking with my wife and we're like, what movie are we going to watch? She always wants to watch the horror movies. And I'm always like, hey, why don't we check out this rom-com over here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking amazing. And I, I I found that out about myself. I wasn't always that way. Um, but like somewhere in my late 20s, I was you know, on a plane, having my wine and cheese that I was like super excited about. I don't know why yeah. I get excited about wine and cheese on a plane, but I do. Uh-huh. It's a weird yeah. thing. Um, and then I watch movies, you know, I'm, I'm traveling a lot. So, and then I found like, this wasn't a rom-com. It was just a straight romantic movie. It was P.S. I love you. Uh huh. This is a true story. I got teary eyed while I'm sitting there drinking red wine and eating cheese and realized at that moment that I was a 40 year old white woman. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. <laughs> and I just owned it from that point on. I'm like, fuck it, dude. I'm into this shit. <laughs> dude, that's so funny you say that. Cause yeah, I like, I get all in my feels with stuff like that, dude. <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. No, dude. Why, why, why should you? It's, yeah. it's okay to feel, right? I feel, yeah. I feel at those moments. What, what can I fucking say? Yeah. So the girl, yeah, the girls that I cheer with, I was just, I was just falling in love with them. I would, you know, write them poems, you know, love letters. Oh, and, dude, do you, you know, have, so I know you're, I know you journal a lot. Do you have any of those poems from back in those days? You know, I do not have the poems. Uh, I wrote a love album for a girl of me playing the acoustic guitar. Dude, you got to put that out. You got to put no, that out. Yeah, you do. You got to put that out. <laughs> I wish I did. I totally wish I did. Because uh, her and her friends laughed about it. You know, and I asked for it well, back. That's not very nice. 
I know, right? I was like, well, give me the CD back, you know. Like, <laughs> I just gave you eight songs of, you know. I just poured my heart and soul into this and you stomped on it. You bitch. You know? <laughs> so, so uh, I got the, I lost the CD, but she, she downloaded the songs onto her computer. Cause, she, cause uh, she, I mean, eventually I think she appreciated them or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And we're yeah. friends to this day. Like she's, she's good people. It's like, you know, good. Oh, okay. Know, I was going to ask if you, if you still talk to this person or is it yeah, more no, like, yeah, like it's, it's, look it's, what it's you could have had, baby. And then, you yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you could have had a failed musician turned comedian. <laughs> <laughs> and a very funny one at that. <laughs> yeah, that's what you, that's what you, you you lost out. No, nah, it, it's it's all cool. And I was like, like I said, yeah, I was one of those dudes where it was just like, you know, that's how I thought. Like, oh, this, this is how you get, you know, women. And I just wanted to be nice to them. You know what I mean? That's that's just you know because I was cheering with them, and you know, like cheerleading gave me a different understanding of women than I think most dudes actually go through, unless they unless there's a guy that grows up with a lot of sisters mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. But like, you know, there was times I was the only dude on the team. So like, you know, it was just a different life. And it's like, oh, like, I don't know. It just it just taught me how to treat different women differently than, you know, most than the dudes. norm. Not not differently because they're women, just differently because you you get to you get to understand them a little bit more, I guess. Yeah, like it's it like, oh, like, you know, like there was times where like, you know, my friends didn't understand, like, they're like, Why are you friends with her? She's so hot. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, she's, I mean, yeah, she's, she's hot, but also, uh, yeah, she's my friend, but also she's a fucking asshole, too. So, you know I mean? so the hot ones shoot, always are, aren't they? Yeah, I'm like, if you want to shoot, <laughs> go ahead and shoot your shot. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> go ahead, you know. <laughs> but that's how, that's how, like, you know, that's just how I saw it. I just, we, we, we bonded on a different level, and it was, you know, it, it, it um, you know, I always appreciate the world of cheerleading, you know, for, you know, helping me with that, like understand, you know, women, gays and in, in, in just such different ways. So where it's like, oh, okay, you know, there's, fu there's fucking humans too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, yeah, it taught me like not every girl has to be a sexual object or something, you know, mm -hmm. like to where it's like, oh, I gotta, gotta I like how you said girl. not every girl, but some. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hope my girlfriend doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she won't. <laughs> the yeah. little, uh, before I before I let you go, um, yeah. Sam, our mutual friend, my producer, uh, sent me over some trivia questions I wanted to ask you. you uh, I was like, this? he sent you over the lyrics to my songs. <laughs> yeah, he had them. In, they're right here now. Um, <laughs> Oh, is this, this is, is this your like, life, Chappelle Lacey. Yeah. Uh, you remember that time you told the girl you loved her? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I'm gonna read these off. We're, we're gonna edit this a little bit differently so it looks better. But um, is this is this like a? Uh, I used to watch that metal show. Is this? Uh, yeah, like like, uh, uh, like, like uh, yeah, like what uh, do they call what, it? Stump Trump or, or the Trump? Uh, uh, what is it? Stump Trunk. Stump the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that metal. It's similar. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend that we're original here. We're just fucking doing what <laughs> everyone else is doing around here. Uh, <laughs> here it goes. So I know, obviously, on your shirt and the painting and what our conversations before, you're a huge Henry Rollins fan. All right, here it goes. What is Henry Rollins' real name? Henry Garfield. Ooh, he got it correct, everybody, right off the yeah. bat. Okay. <laughs> Paul Rubens, a.k.a. Pee Wee Herman, was killed by a cheerleader in what movie? Oh, shit. Come on, you got to know everything, cheerleader. I know. Uh, what <laughs> movie? I keep thinking this damn movie. Uh, it, was it the movie where he was? Where there was a bunch of superheroes? I don't know, no. man. I don't know about superheroes uh, in this movie, but there was, uh, there, was, there was a plethora of a certain kind of character. I know, yeah, they were they were like weird superheroes. No, no, uh, I wouldn't call them superheroes. Gosh, Pee Wee Herman was killed. What? Oh, it was as, it, he was as Pee Wee Herman. Uh, I think he was just Paul Rubin in this movie. Oh, oh gosh, <laughs> I don't even know what movies he's been in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess he's gonna get that one wrong. It was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, Buffy. Oh, wow. No. Gosh, right, I'll, take, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take the L on that one. Well, you're not a big change. Buffy fan? 
I can't remember that movie. <laughs> Neither can I. Go, <laughs> the 1993 Academy Award snubbed Val Kilmer from receiving a nomination for his amazing performance as what character? Uh, drinking Doc Holliday. Too. Yeah, that one's a layup. Yeah. We already Dude, talked he, about yeah, this. Yeah, I always think that's like one of the craziest it's things. It's one of the best role. It's, it's one of the best things I've ever seen. Like it, The two things that I feel Val Kilmer got snubbed on is J- playing Jim Morrison and Doc Holliday. He Dude, fucking slayed both those roles. Both of those roles. Both of those roles. And got nothing for it. Nothing. Me, and, the, he's, and he actually sang and made me forget how, like... He did such a good job of portraying Jim Morrison and actually singing those parts that I had to go back and listen to Jim Morrison to make sure I could tell the difference. I was like, this is fucking gnarly. And then someone, you know, you're a very talented actor. I don't mean any disrespect. Well, the guy who did Bohemian Rhapsody didn't sing a fucking single note and got an Academy Award. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, like, come on, man. Like, Val Kilmer doesn't get it. And this isn't a knock on that actor, which I don't even remember his name. It's not a knock on that actor. It's more a knock on the uh, Rami itself. Malik or something like that. Rami yes, that's Malik. right. Rami yeah. Malik. Anyways, I digress. Before joining Nirvana and Foo Fighters, Pat Smear was a founding member of what iconic punk band? Yep. <laughs> the Germs. <laughs> the Germs. <laughs> Bro, I, I, I was love... hoping you would like at least take a second and because then I could like point out that, hey, it's right behind you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if you're not watching, if you're not watching, I have a germs t-shirt on my bed right now. Oh yeah. See, you're you're a professional podcaster right there. You you you're even helping me remind people who are listening that there's actual visual to this too. Yeah, so, it is yeah. yeah, there's a visual, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, it's so funny. Yeah, I know these the most random things that most people don't even know. Yeah, I think that, well, I mean, that's kind of, like, from our conversations before, that's kind of why Sam came up with some of this shit. It was like, hey. Oh, hell yeah. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Sam. <laughs> In a 1997 MTV interview, who said, I still love the Beatles, and I still love George Harrison as a songwriter in the Beatles. But as a person, I think he's fucking nipple. If I've ever met him, I'm going to tell him. Okay, it's the Gallagher brothers, but which one? I, I, ah, I want to say it is. Um, I want to say ne- Liam said that. You are correct. Not only did yeah, you yeah, get Liam, it. Yep, Liam said that. Yeah, that's bro, interesting that you said that. So like, if you're not, if you're not watching, I have an oasis. Uh, everything that I'm asking you about <laughs> is from your room somehow. You know, it's so funny because like when you said <laughs> Sam came up with the questions, I was like, I wonder when there's going to be an oasis question. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, number six. What album dethroned the king of pop, Michael Jackson's Dangerous, as number one on the Billboard charts? Never mind. On, yeah, fuck. You didn't even let me finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess on to the fucking next one. I think that was September 1991 is when that album came out. And they didn't even know they that the album broke big because they were in Germany. Correction. See, no- you should have you should have quit while you were ahead. Uh, it was actually charts uh, that they took over the charts on January 11th of 1992. No, I was saying the out al- when the album came out. Oh, when the album came out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Charlie Sheen reprised this actor's role in the TV adaption of the movie Anger Management. He he revived the role of reprised this actor's role in the TV adaptation of the movie Anger Management. Um, who was in that movie? Was it Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler was in the movie, but it was his co-star, Jack Nicholson. Oh, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Damn it. It was so funny. I was like, Danny DeVito? <laughs> I was going to say Danny DeVito. That's my doppelganger. Uh, Sister Gates always tells me that my doppelganger is Danny DeVito, by the way. That's a hilarious one. <laughs> it's either him. I, I'm somehow Danny DeVito and Charlie Day rolled into one somehow. And I and don't deny and it. And they're, and they're both on the same show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um what popular rock band from Mesa, Arizona, was formed Jimmy in Jimmy World. 19- God damn. He doesn't let me fucking finish these. <laughs> you, think, you, think, you think I'm not going to know that one? <laughs> <laughs> they might be the only band out of Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> uh, you, you got a couple others? No. <laughs> <Out of Mesa. laughs> no. That's amazing. Great band, though. Great band. Yeah. Okay. Prior to joining Avenged Sevenfold, Brooks Wackerman played drums in two iconic punk bands. Name one of those bands. I don't get multiple choice on this one. Um, (laughs) 
fuck no. This should be a layup, right? No. Two punk bands. Two punk bands before joining Avenged before. Sevenfold. I'll give you a hint. And he joined Avenged Sevenfold for our last album, The Stage. Give me his age. He is, I should know this. He's like 43 now or some shit. 43? I was at his 40th birthday. I was at his 41st birthday. I don't remember if he's had a 42 or 43. Uh, I'm going to ta- take, w- take a whack at this one. That's that's funny right there. You're going to take a whack at the Wackerman question. Okay, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, offspring? Ooh. Bad religion and suicidal tendencies. Oh. All of the people watching right now and listening that are fans. I knew that. Are fucking burning your next album that you haven't come out with yet. Ah. <laughs> Gosh. That oh. one. Oh, I hate myself for that one. Oh, don't, oh. don't worry about it. He's been in a lot of things, so it's it's hard. I, I, I have an ongoing joke on the show where I ask people, do you know Brooks Wackerman? Because for some reason I talked to him, I have someone on the fucking show, and he's like, hey, I did a, I, I tracked some drums with that guy back in the 90s. Like, did that album ever come out? Can you ask him about that? I'm like, how the <laughs> fuck do you know Ethan Embry? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Damn, I should, I'm so mad at that one. <laughs> You want another take at it? We can we can edit it and 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 make it look like you got it right. No, nah, I'll take I'll take the L. I'll make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we only got two more. Finish the uh. lyric and name the artist, because I want you and I feel you crawling underneath my skin like a hunger, like a burning to find the place. I've <laughs> Nicholas J. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading these. This is amazing. Nicholas J. What's left of me? <laughs> <laughs> And why do you know that? That's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you have your wine and cheese and crackers. <laughs> I have that Nick Lachey You song. have Nick Lachey. <laughs> I'm loving these questions. These are good questions. <laughs> yeah, th- unfortunately, that's all I have for now. Oh. Um, but thank you for playing the game. I don't know what we're going to call that. We're going to call that... Uh... <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good uh, game. That's... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them, I was like, come on. Well, now, it. okay, now we have a last trivia question. Uh, Chappelle Lacey, what do we call this trivia game? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we'll call it this trivia game. How about that? We'll call yeah. it this which, trivia which ones, game. Which ones did you think I was going to get wrong? Did you think I would get the... You no, know? I actually, I thought, I surprisingly, I thought you'd get all of them right. And I'm more oh. surprised that you got the Brooks Wackerman one wrong. Uh, you know... <laughs> As a punk fan, as a fan of Avenged Sevenfold, as I know that you are, you didn't mention it at all yet, but you we talked about like, that before. Uh, <laughs> Your Twitter's about to get blown up, dude. I can't I can't believe I did yeah, I was like offspring. But it, it's a good you thing you don't you don't let it ruin your day. But. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> it was something like cause weren't bad religion and Offspring on the same label at a time, like Epitaph. I don't Epitaph, yeah. They were they were they were both there. Yeah. So like it was like something I like I was like, it's something along those lines. And I was like, wait, how old is he? And then I was, I don't know. It was (sighs) (laughs) I like how upset you are about this. (laughs) Yeah, because it's like it's like one of those questions where I'm like, I know like literally the most random details of stuff. And I was like, I couldn't (laughs) believe like and and people don't understand that those worlds kind of cross like the like the current drummer for Rancid used to drum for the used. Yeah. You know what I mean? People don't know that. You know, yeah, no, yeah. I remember the when I when we first met the guys in the used, he was the drummer on Warp Tour um yeah. right before they blew up. Um and yeah, I remember just watching those guys every day. And funny enough that you mentioned that, that very warp tour had Rancid and No Effects on it. So I really? I, I wonder if that's when they when they met. I'll have to ask him next time I see him. Oh man. Yeah, oh, gosh. When it's all over, we we all got to hang, though. Oh, absolutely, man. I, I definitely agree. Before I let you go, though, I just got to ask, um, what is your your current plans, your future plans? Do you have anything coming down the pipe? I know amidst, amidst the pandemic, it's kind of hard to navigate your art form right now, but uh, is there anything that we can be looking out for and uh, looking for for Chappelle Lacey? Um, just, you know, I just ask people to, you know, during this time to follow my podcast, 
that I'm on the uh, King and the Sting and then my individual one it's managed. Uh, they're all on all uh, streaming uh, platforms and all that. And, you know, I'm not a big Twitter guy or a big Facebook guy. So most of the time you'll just find me on Instagram sharing stories of my favorite songs that I'm listening to for the day or whatever. A lot of it is Oasis, to be honest, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from time to time, you'll see some GBH, you'll see, you know, some stuff like that. You'll see Nick Lachey. Yeah, there you go. You got Nick Lachey in there. Wait, what's your, I already know it, but uh, your Instagram and Twitter and Facebook handles, where can everyone Just go check that Chappelle out? Just at Chappelle Lacey. Pretty at Chappelle simple. Lacey everywhere. Everyone yeah. go check that out. Follow this guy. Um, he's got a bright future of an already very budding career. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, dude. Um, Thanks for having me. We will definitely do this in person with or without the camera sometime soon. Yes. Um, and maybe you, uh, I, I don't know if you drink. I forgot to ask you about that. I mean, the show is called Drink. Oh, no, I don't. I, it's best that I don't. It's best <laughs> that you don't. Okay, good. Well, I'll, I'll drink for the both of us and yeah, yeah, uh, we'll hang out in person very soon. <laughs> All right. I'll, do the C, I'll do the CBD. You got the CBD. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll get you some sweet drop and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll, and I'll do one of these here. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I really appreciate you. Cheers, brother. And uh, again, thanks for the great chat. Thanks for having me. All right, man. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Drinks with Johnny. And thanks to Chappelle Lacey for being on and having a very honest and great conversation with me. I really appreciated that. We had a lot of fun. We got into some some real stuff there, too. So I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys for checking it out. If you like what you've been seeing, make sure you subscribe right down here. Um, maybe even push that uh, bell notifications button so you don't miss the next episode of Drinks with Johnny. Um, I know that these episodes could get a little long sometimes for you to look at one screen. So if you want, go ahead over to wherever you listen to podcasts and we'll have the full audio up over there for your listening pleasure. Uh, for me, podcasts are great because every time um, I go back to an episode that I didn't have time to finish it, it bookmarks it for me. It takes me right back to where I left off. And I think that's a great thing that they do. So anywhere you podcast, just type in Drinks with Johnny. Go subscribe there. Listen to the podcast. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Drinks with Johnny. And go to drinkswithjohnny.com. Sign up for the newsletter. And you're going to get 20% off all the official merch on the .com site. As well as exclusive content that you will only get through the newsletter. So make sure you head over to drinkswithjohnny.com. For that, um, I guess that's it for now. My son's walking into the room. So as always, till next time, cheers.